In this video, we're going to look at a new piece of software called USB Detective, written by Jason Hale. USB Detective will provide in-depth information on USB mass storage devices. Now, if you've watched Introduction to Windows Forensics, which is the first video in this series, you're probably already familiar with manually parsing numerous artifacts on a Windows system that can provide USB device forensic information. As a refresher, some of the more common artifacts include the USB and USB store keys and the mounted devices key under the system registry hive, the Windows portable devices key under the software hive, the mount points to key within ntuser.dat, Windows setupapi.log and setupapi.dev.log files, and amcache.hve. If you haven't yet watched that video, or if you're unfamiliar with how to manually parse these artifacts, do yourself a favor and review that material beforehand. You'll find a link to the video in the description below, and the USB forensics section starts around the 24 minute mark. While the tool we're going to cover automates the collection and presentation of this data, like everything else in digital forensics, you should first fully understand how to manually parse the aforementioned artifacts and not blindly rely on the output of any tool. I've mentioned two other USB forensics tools in my previous videos, one being USB Dev View from Nearsoft, and the other being USB Device Forensics from Woneware. You'll find a link to these in the description as well. Both are excellent free utilities that provide a wealth of information to us, however, USB Detective takes this a step further. From the product website, the software includes the following features. Visually represented timestamp consistency levels. Dozens of sources queried for USB device information. The author points out that the association of a single data point with an event is problematic. For example, while the enum USB subkey hierarchy is a well-known location for determining the last time a USB device was connected to a system, the associated last write timestamps that we analyze to determine that may be updated through events that would result in all of the timestamps being set to the same date and time. If additional data points exist from which that data can be collected, which they likely will, then USB Detective will be able to provide us with that information. This is a key feature of this software, the collection of multiple data points and not relying on a single data point from which to draw a conclusion. The source of every identified value preserved for later reporting and documentation. Correlation using multiple data points, such as device serial, container ID, etc. Query data points adjusted based on automatic OS version detection. Identify devices even after they're removed via Windows 10 device cleanup. Now this is a big deal. As first reported by David Cowan in April of 2017, Windows 10 will periodically clean up some of the registry entries previously mentioned, including the USB and USB store keys. It does this for USB devices that have not been recently used. This software, will search other locations not affected by this cleanup process, and will be able to provide the examiner with information about when a device was removed via device cleanup. This could help explain why certain information about that device may not be available. Even previous versions of registry hives, which may be available within volume shadow copies, for example, can be fed into USB Detective to provide a more comprehensive view of USB device activity on a given system. The software supports Windows XP through Windows 10, and it supports multiple versions of all of the accepted artifacts. USB Detective also includes the following additional features, as seen here. In the next section of this video, we'll go ahead and fire up USB Detective and take a look at the software on a live system. So let's get started. Okay, thanks for sticking with me through the first part of the video. I realize that listening to me verbally explain features of the software isn't nearly as interesting as actually seeing it live, so let's dig in. On the desktop, you can see that I have a folder called USB Artifacts, and in it, I have ntuser.dat, software, system, amcache.hve, and setupapi.dev.log. 
These artifacts came from a Dell laptop that I use in my lab environment. And on that laptop, I had used several different USB flash drives so that we have a little bit of evidence to work with. So what we're going to do is actually go ahead and launch USB Detective. And when we do, after the UAC prompt, you will see an option to choose the input data. We can select files or folders, or we can select a logical drive. For this demo, we're going to be using the top option, select files slash folders. If, however, we had an E01 file or a DD file, and we wanted to mount that image with FTK Imager or something like that, then we could point to that logical drive and USB Detective would then find the artifacts on that particular drive. But again, we're going to be using the first option here. And when I click on that, you'll note that we can specify a file or a folder. So technically I could just specify the USB artifacts folder and let it try to find all of the necessary evidence, but I'll go ahead and explicitly specify each of these. So for the system hive, I'll click on file. We'll go to desktop, USB artifacts, system. For software, we'll choose software. For NT user, we'll choose NT user. For the setup API, we'll choose this. And for AM cache, we will choose AM cache. And now you can see that I have specified each of these five different artifacts or artifact locations, I should say, because within these registry hives and log file, we will have the artifacts that USB detective will parse to give us our information. So let's go ahead and click the process artifacts button and we will go ahead and maximize this as well. The dialog box shows that two reported timestamps in the last connected column are identical. You may want to investigate this further. In our case, this is actually intentional and not something anomalous. But right off the bat, you'll notice a nice clean output. The leftmost column says serial slash UID. Now, of course, we learned in the introduction to Windows Forensics video that if we have an ampersand in the second character of a particular USB drive's serial number, that that would indicate it is not a globally unique serial number. Uh, it may be unique on that one machine, but the manufacturer of that device has not created a globally unique serial number as per Microsoft standards. So some of these will fall into that category. And others, of course, are actual serial numbers. The one I will pick on is the one that starts with FBI. Uh, that was not intentional. It just happens to be that the serial number starts with F, B, and I, followed by this string of numbers here. And it's a generic uh, flash drive that I happen to use on this particular machine. But you'll see when I mouse over that, I got a pop-up showing me the locations from which that data had been obtained and we'll dig into this a little bit more deeply in a minute. But as I look towards the right, I see a first connected timestamp. So the first time this drive was seen on the system, a last connected timestamp, and a last disconnected timestamp. So you can see that if I mouse over the first connected timestamp, it shows all values, and it actually shows us all the different locations from which it was able to parse and determine that first connected timestamp. The confidence is high. It's in green, as you see here. And then slightly less confident is the yellow timestamp here, yellow coded timestamp, which is the last connected time, and then our last disconnected time. So those values are pretty self-explanatory. The first time the drive was seen on the system, the last time it was connected, and the last time it was disconnected from the system. We also see the volume name or label you can see here, it's got a couple of different locations from which it's determining that. We also see in one of these cases, the last assigned drive letter. That information is apparently not available for some of the older drives that have been connected here. In fact, this particular drive called Sticky here was the most recently connected and apparently that data is still present. And you can see that it's in the system mounted devices key, which again, as we learned in the introduction to Windows Forensics video, is where you would find that associated drive letter. Now we don't have a volume serial number. If you recall, that particular artifact was located in our EMDM GMT key, or external memory device management key. But that 
particular key is only going to be present on systems which have a mechanical hard drive, a non-SSD. And in our case, we do have an SSD, so we do not have VSNs present. We also don't have last user information. I have basically provided the artifacts from which this particular data is originating, and I already know that the ntuser.dat that I provided uh, is from my particular user account. So if I go up to view, there's another option here in the professional version of the software, which I'm using, as you can see. And by the way, I should mention, I actually found this software on a forensics website, and I reached out to the author and asked if he would provide me a license to the professional version of the software so that I could evaluate it and create a video for it. So this is not a sponsored video. I actually contacted him. I can tell you that uh, there are not a lot of differences between the professional and the community version of the software. The community version is completely free, but it lacks the verbose mode and the reporting features. So because we are using the professional version and do have access to verbose mode, let's see what it looks like. And as you can see, for each of the USB flash drives on the system, and here's the first one, we have all of the locations from which USB Detective was able to provide us this information. So again, as I mentioned in the first section of this video, this is the unique thing about the software. It's not looking in a single location. It is looking in multiple locations to provide us with the data. So obviously, the more sources of forensic data that we have, the more confident we are in our findings. And you can see here for description, first connected, last connected, last disconnected, we have multiple sources from which that information was obtained. And same here for last drive letter, of course, that wasn't present here, nor was VSN. And of course, additional attributes are listed here. And then we have the divider line here, and then starts the information for the next drive on the list. Now, the other interesting thing is, if we click on the report menu, which again is only available in the professional version, we can actually export this to an XLSX Excel file. So I'll go ahead and save this one, and I'll go ahead and save the verbose view as well. So let's go ahead and open that folder, and you'll see here are the two reports. First off, let's look at the standard report. And this is the same data that we saw when we first opened USB Detective. So it's put it in a nice XLSX format for us, and we see those same values. So this is obviously very handy for inclusion in a report, or of course we can filter this data and manipulate it on systems where we may have numerous USB flash drives. So this is quite handy. However, if we look at the verbose report, well, it is indeed very verbose. So if we scroll over, looking at the column headers at the top, you can see just how much information we have here. It was everything that we saw in that text view of the verbose report, but now it's in nice columns to enable us to be able to easily filter and sort on any of these values. So again, I'm just slowly scrolling across here and you can see just how much data is available. So that's pretty remarkable and as you can see, this would be quite handy if you really wanted to dig into device usage on a given system. So quite a bit of information in the verbose report. And that, of course, is this data in XLSX format. So once again, let's go ahead and switch back to the results grid, which is where we started. Looking at the other options here, of course, we can go to file and once again, select files or folders or a logical drive, just like we saw in the beginning. We also have the option to save log, which will just save a plain text version. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now, if we open that file, you can see here that we have basically a log of everything that the software has done. So we have timestamps and information with regards to what exactly USB Detective parsed and at what time it did so. Under tools, we can clear the results. And if we click on options, there aren't a lot of options, but we can specify a consistency level threshold. 
We can turn on verbose logging, which is on by default. Show data input selector on startup, which is on by default. These are all default values, by the way. I haven't changed any of these. The other thing is that by default, it will localize the displayed time zone. So here I'm in Eastern time. And that means that all of the values it's showing me are localized to my time zone. We can also display the timestamps in 24 hour format. And then we have a couple of Excel report options here. So again, I haven't changed any of that. That's all default. If we go to view, of course, we saw the verbose mode option report just has the two options here. And of course we can uh, get some help with features here that we see. And also it's worth mentioning that there is a comprehensive PDF manual that comes with the software as seen here that will actually show you exactly how to use it, though it is fairly self-explanatory, I must say, but this does walk you through everything. So again, that is a quick look at USB Detective. Very easy to use. As I stated in the first part of the video, I do believe it's very important for you to understand where these artifacts originate and how to manually parse them. This is certainly not the only tool on the market that can do this, as we mentioned previously. But it is one of the only ones I know of that looks at all of these numerous sources for information and provides us with all of those details in the verbose reports. So again, I hope you find this tool useful. There is a community version that provides most of these features for free, and you can also purchase the professional version. I'll include a link to these in the video description. As always, I would like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Please do like, subscribe, and share. And if you've got an extra one or two dollars a month that you can spare and are willing to help support this channel, please consider donating to the Patreon account that I have set up here, which you'll see on screen. So until next time, that will wrap up this video. Thanks for watching.